Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to review the different properties of rational exponents and how to use them. We're going to use those properties to simplify expressions, to expand and to condense, and to get an expression to be as simplified as possible. We're going to talk about how to use a calculator to evaluate a rational exponent. What buttons do we push on a calculator to figure out what a value is as a decimal? And then we're going to tie those things together to solve equations that have exponents, to solve an exponential equation by using the nth root. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's start by reviewing some basic rules of exponents. It's not essential that you know the name of each of these properties, but that you know how to use them and apply them in both directions. So if we have something to the power of m and the same base, a, to the power of n, what we can do to combine these is we can add them. So if we have 5 to the power of 1 half times 5 to the power of 3 halves, we can add 1 half and 3 halves to get 4 halves or 2, which allows us to simplify this to be 5 squared, which is 25. If we have a power to a power, instead of adding, we multiply. So here we were multiplying, so we added. Here we have power to power, so we multiply. So 3 to the 5 halves squared means we're going to take 5 halves and multiply it by 2, which is going to be 5 times 2 divided by 2, so just 5. 3 to the 5th is then 243. If we have a power outside, everything inside gets this power. So a, b to the power of m is like having a times b, m times, which means a gets that exponent and b gets that exponent. So for example, 16 times 9 to the power of 1 half means that 16 gets the exponent of 1 half and 9 gets the exponent of 1 half. And also as a reminder, which we'll review a little bit more in this lesson, something to the power of 1 half is the same thing as taking the square root of that which is gonna give us the square root of 16 is four, the square root of nine is three, and when we multiply those, we can get 12. So as you can see, a lot of times applying these powers is gonna make something that looks complicated, 16 times nine, and then figuring out what the square root of that is, a little bit more simple to deal with. If we have something to a negative exponent, we can take the reciprocal and rewrite that as long as the base is not equal to zero. So if I had 36 to the negative 1 half power, that's the same thing as 1 over 36 to the 1 half power, which means 1 over the square root of 36, which is 1 over 6. If we have anything to the power of 0, that's going to equal 1. As long as that base isn't 0, 0 to the power of 0 is undefined. But 213 to the power of 0, negative 50 to the power of 0, that's all 1. If we are dividing a to the power of m over a to the power of n. Since they have the same base, we can subtract those exponents. So here, 4 to the 5 halves divided by 4 to the power of 1 half, we can subtract 5 halves minus 1 half to get 2, which is going to give us 16. Similarly to the power of a power product, or power of a product rule, um, even if we have a quotient, the exponent on the outside is going to apply to everything inside. So that means 27 to the 1 -third over 64 to the 1 -third. Something to the power of 1 -third is the same thing as taking the cube root. So the cube root of 27, oh, there's a typo here. The cube root of 27 is 3. And the cube root of 64 is 4. And the last property we're going to talk about today is the rational exponents property. So if we have a to the power of 1 over n, we can rewrite that, or a to the power of m over n. We can rewrite that by using the properties above. So we could take the m out, and then we could say that's the nth root of a to the power of m. So for example, we could say that if we had 16 to the power of 5 over 4, we could rewrite that as 16 to the power of 1 fourth to the fifth, because all I would do to combine those together is multiply. This would give us the fourth root of 16 to the fifth power. Sometimes it's easier to have this exponent on the outside, and sometimes it's easier to have it on the inside. But we know that the fourth root of 16 is 2, so this would become 2 to the fifth, which is 32. That's probably easier than trying to figure out what 16 to the fifth power is. That's going to be a really large number. This works the same way if the exponent is negative. So a to the negative m over n means I'm going to take the reciprocal using that negative exponent property. 
So that would give me 1 over a to the n, 1 over n to the power of m, which we can rewrite this way. The most important thing, both for this class and future classes, is that you can use these properties to go back and forth. Sometimes it's helpful to have the one third on the inside with each part. Sometimes it's helpful to take the one third on the outside and simplify what's inside first. So it's essential that you're comfortable enough with these properties to work forward and backward and decide what, which property is gonna be the most useful to you in any given circumstance. One other thing that I want to remind you is that whenever you're working with exponents, if you forget what a property is, if you're looking at 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 3 halves and you're just not sure what that means, just go ahead and expand it out. So what I mean by that, the expression I like to say is when in doubt, expand it out. So what I mean by that is if you're not sure if you're supposed to add or if you're supposed to multiply, for example, 5 squared times 5 to the third, just expand out what that means. What does 5 squared mean? It means 5 times 5. What does 5 to the third mean? It means 5 times 5, running out of space, times 5. And then how many 5s do we have? We have 5 fives. So if you're ever unsure, am I supposed to add? Am I supposed to multiply? How do I work with this? See if you can expand it out to answer that same question. So similarly with something like this property, if I had... 5x squared, that means I have 5x times 5x. And what does that mean? That means I have 25x to the second power. If you expand it out, you won't forget that that exponent on the outside applies to everything on the inside. So let's go ahead and look at some examples and see how these properties can help us manipulate to simplify an expression that maybe looks complicated when we begin. So here we have a variety of examples that are going to require us to use different properties that we just looked at. What I want to do is show you that for some of these problems, there's multiple approaches. For some of these problems, it might make more sense for you to rewrite using radicals. If you become more comfortable with radicals, it might help you to rewrite it that way. It also might help you if you're strong in your number sense to just rewrite what you know something is using exponents and simplify it that way. So I'm going to show you two different ways. I'm not requiring that you do it each way. I'm hoping that you can figure out what works best for you. So for example, when I look at number one, 16 to the power of 3 over 2, for me, my first thought is, well, I know that 16 is the same thing as 4 squared and I'm gonna keep that outside exponent there. And I know that properties of exponents tell me when I have power to power like this, I'm gonna multiply. And when I multiply here, I'm gonna get four to the six over two or four to the third, which I can simplify down to be 64. So if you look at 16 and you don't think four squared or you don't think two to the fourth, which also would have worked here, then it may be helpful for you to rewrite using radicals. So that two in the denominator means that 16 to the power of three over two is the same thing as the square root of 16 to the third power. Well, we know that the square root of 16 is four and four to the third power is 64. So there's not really a dramatically different amount of work in either of these two methods. It's really just about what works better for you and what you're more comfortable with. So why don't you go on ahead and try the same sort of method on number two and see how it goes. All right, hopefully you've had time to work with number two. So 64 makes me think eight squared or four to the third. When I look at this exponent, since I have a three in the denominator, I'm getting the feeling that rewriting it as four to the third is gonna be a little easier. That doesn't mean that rewriting it as eight squared isn't also gonna be helpful. I just think this is gonna be more helpful. So four to the third to the power of four thirds is gonna become four to the fourth power, which is 256. Now, if we were doing it using radicals, this would give us the cube root of 64 to the power of four. The cube root of 64 is four. Four to the power of four is 256. Okay. If we look at number three and we have seven to the power of something times seven to the power of something, what that means that we're doing is we're going to add those two exponents. So seven to the power of one fourth plus one half. Well, we're gonna need a common denominator to do that. So seven to the power of one fourth, if I want a common denominator, that common denominator is gonna be two. So this is gonna become one fourth plus two fourths which is gonna give us seven to the power of three fourths. 
Now, if I cube seven and try and take the fourth root of that, that's really not gonna be any more simplified. So this is actually as simplified as it gets. And what I mean is if I rewrite this using radicals, the fourth root of seven cubed, there is no integer that is the fourth root of seven. So this answer is acceptable as well but it probably makes more sense to leave it in the form that it was originally, but condensing it down to just be one individual term. Okay, for number four, the big difference is that negative exponent. So again, what are you more comfortable with? The first thing that I'm thinking is that I could rewrite 32 as two to the fifth, and then on the outside, I'm gonna have that negative three fifths. Now I can deal with the negative whenever I want, but I'm gonna choose to deal with it after I deal with the two. So two to the fifth times three over five, so five times three over five, this is gonna give me two to the negative third, which is gonna give me one over two to the third. That's how we make that negative exponent positive is by taking the reciprocal, and that's gonna give me one eighth. If you prefer to use radicals, this is gonna be the same thing as saying one over the fifth root of 32 to the power of three. Now 32, if you did not know that the fifth root of 32 is two, which hopefully you do, or hopefully after doing a few practice problems it becomes more natural, you can do the upside down birthday cake method to figure out that 32 is two times 16, 16 is two times eight, 8 is 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, and since the index here is 5, we're looking for 5 of the same number, which gives us 2, and there's nothing left over, so this becomes 1 over 2 to the third, which again gives us 1 eighth. Okay, I'm gonna encourage you to pause the video and try and work on numbers 5 and 6 on your own. See what you can do to try and simplify them first, and then consolidate or condense the answer as much as possible. Then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, hopefully you had time to work on this. What I noticed first about number five is that the bases are not the same. So I can't combine four to the fifth and three to the fifth in the same way that I combined on number three because on number three, the bases were both seven and here the bases are different. What I can do is say, well, they both have to the fifth power so I can pull that out of our exponent. I can factor that exponent out, and then the negative 1 fifth was already there. That means I can multiply 4 times 3 to get 12, and I can multiply 5 times negative 1 fifth to get negative 1. And how do I deal with negative exponents? I take the reciprocal. So this is going to give me 1 over 12. You could also, in theory, figure out what 4 to the 5th is, figure out what 3 to the 5th is, multiply those numbers together, that's going to be a really large number, and then take the 5th root of that. That just feels like a lot more work and working with bigger numbers, which makes us less comfortable. Okay, number 6. So what I notice, again, bases are different, but exponents are the same. So I want to see what happens if I just take that exponent out. I don't wanna forget that there was already a two here and you may wanna write that as two over one to make it a little easier to see how to combine those fractions. Well, 42 over six is seven, two times one third is two thirds, and just like on number three, there's not really more that we can do to simplify this. So this is going to be my final answer. To to determine whether or not you have more to do, you should always ask myself, well, am I gonna be able to get anywhere? If I take seven and I square it, I get 49. Is there an even cube root of 49? No, not necessarily. So there's not going to be a more simplified version of this final answer. Now that we've talked about how to simplify expressions using rational exponents, let's actually talk about how to use your calculator to evaluate to find a numerical or a decimal answer approximation for these values. So go ahead and find a scientific calculator. You can use your phone calculator if you don't have one handy, but let's look at some examples of how to use your calculator. Okay, so let's talk about the buttons on your calculator that are going to help you evaluate rational exponents. So if I ask you, what is 9 to the power of 1 fifth? Well, you can't use the tricks that we just learned to find an approximation for that because there's no even integer fifth root of nine. So what we could do is use a calculator to approximate it. And I, I would like you to always have three decimal places to round to three decimal places when you're doing this. 
So depending on the type of calculator you have, there's usually one of two buttons that you're gonna use to put something up into an exponent. So if I'm typing nine to the power of one fifth, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit nine. And then depending on the type of calculator, you're gonna look for like a caret button, like in English when you forget a word and you need a little up arrow, or a button that looks like Y to the power of X, or a button that looks like A to the power of B. So here, the button that I see is A to the power of B. That's gonna move me up into the exponent. And since my exponent is a fraction, what I need to, to do is use division. So I'm gonna put parentheses. One fifth really just means one divided by five. And here it actually rewrites it as a fraction and then I can hit enter and it's giving me the same value that I see up here. I wanted to show you a picture of a couple of the common calculators that I see so you can see that button. So here is that up arrow button. So you would press nine up arrow and then you can grab parentheses from here, parentheses one divided by five. And it will actually look like one division sign five and hit enter and you'll get that same value. On this other calculator here, you're looking for that y to the power of x. So you're gonna hit your base, and then you're gonna press y to the power of x, and then you're gonna use your parentheses and type one divided by five. So what I would like you to do is go ahead and practice typing things in for number eight and number nine, actually just for number eight, and then we'll talk about number nine. So go ahead and practice typing that in, and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, so for 12 to the power of 3 over 8, I'm going to type 12, oops, not 13, 12 to the power of AB, and I'm going to start parentheses, 3 divided by 8, and I'm going to hit enter, and that gives me 2.53. 917. So if I'm having, if I'm rounding to three decimal places, that's going to give me 2.539 because the next number is a one, so I would round down. Now, the weird thing about number nine is how do I do a fourth root of the, of seven and then cube it? My, my number one answer to you is it's probably always going to be easiest for you to just rewrite it as a rational exponent. So the number that's on the outside, top dog, that goes first, three divided by four. This is the same thing as seven to the power of three over four. And then you can do exactly what we just did. So you can say seven to the power of three divided by four. Now, if you wanted to try and use the radicals, many calculators have buttons that allow you to do that. This is how you could go about doing that. You're now going to be looking for that n square root button. So the first thing we would do here is we would type a 4, and then we would write n root. Oh, nope, I'm wrong. We would hit the nth root and type the 4, and then go inside the radical and type 7, hit enter, and then we can say that answer, answer, to the power of 3. Again, I think it's easier to use rational exponents. On calculators like these ones, typically you actually have to type the four and then type the n root button and then type the inside number after that. So play around with your calculator, make sure you know how to use it. And let's apply this knowledge now that we know how to use our calculator to find exact answers or to find the decimal form of the answer. Let's go ahead and talk about how we can solve equations involving rational exponents. So here we have an equation, equal sign, that has an exponent and our goal is to solve this equation. Solving an equation to an nth power is really similar to how we solved a quadratic. So our goal is first gonna be to isolate the thing that is being put to the nth power. So in this case, we're gonna be isolating this part right here, x minus three to the fourth. Then we'll take the nth root, in this case four, of both sides and solve for the variable that's left. A couple of things to remember, we can't take the root, any sort of root, of both sides until we have isolated that term. Second thing to remember, anything to an even power, so a squared sign, a fourth, a sixth, an eighth, any even exponent means that we need to include a plus or minus symbol with our answer. There will be two answers. 
That doesn't apply if we have odd roots. And then we're gonna simplify the radical as much as possible if it does simplify. And for these problems, I actually want you to practice using your calculator just to make sure that we have a solid understanding of how to plug these values into a calculator to get a decimal approximation. So let's look at this first problem. In order to isolate x minus three to the fourth power, we need to get rid of this one. So we need to subtract one on both sides. That's gonna give me 20. And then we need to get rid of this five. So we're gonna divide both sides by five. That's gonna give me x minus three to the fourth is equal to four. Now, to get rid of to the fourth power, we are going to take the fourth root of both sides. When I take the fourth root of the fourth power, that's going to leave me with x minus 3. Since that's an even root we're taking on both sides, I need plus or minus and the fourth root of 4. Well, 4 is 2 times 2. There's no even value for the fourth root of 4, so I can't simplify that at all. But I can now solve for x. What do I need to do to solve for x? I need to get my 3 to the other side. So this is going to give me x equals 3 plus or minus the fourth root of 4. And we're going to use our set notation brackets here as well. Now, I want you to practice doing this on your calculator. So if we were going to come up with an approximation, I am going to use approximately symbols here since we're not finding the exact value. What we would need to do first is figure out the smaller number is going to be whatever we get when we do 3 minus 4 to the power of 1 divided by 4. So in your calculator, you could type it in this way, 3 minus, and then I would put parentheses here so that it makes sure to, uh, to evaluate in the order we need it to. When you do that, you should get 1.586. That's going to be the smaller of my two values. Then I'm going to do 3 plus that same value, which is going to give me 4.414. Depending on the type of calculator that you're using, you may be able to scroll up and click on this and it'll copy it back down to the next line and then you can just scroll over and change that plus to a minus and then you don't have to retype everything, which is kind of nice, but it really depends on the type of calculator that you have. So here, these are my approximate rounded answer. This is an approximation. This over here with the radical is the exact answer. So it is important you understand the exact answer still has the radical. On a calculator, we're coming up with an approximation for that answer. Now our approximation is accurate to three decimal places. That's great, but it is still in fact an approximation. Let's look at four more examples and then we'll wrap up this video. All right, here we go. Solving equations using n nth roots. Find the real solutions, solve by hand, and then practice using your calculator to find a value that is accurate to three decimal places. So I want your final answers to be accurate to three decimal places. So I'm gonna encourage you to pause this video and try and work through any of these problems that you think you can on your own. So it could be that you think maybe you can do 10 and 12, maybe you think you can just do 10 and 11, but give yourself a chance to try and do some of these on your own and then unpause the video to see how you did. Okay, hopefully you've had time to work through some of these on your own. In order to isolate here on number 10, we're going to divide both sides by 4. That's going to give me x to the power of 5 is equal to 32, which you may already know means that x has to be 5, but we could take the fifth root of both sides, and that's going to give me that x is equal to 2. Not plus or minus 2, because if it was negative 2 to the power of 5, we would get negative 32. So there's only one solution here. And hopefully you are checking that on your calculator. This would be, you could do four times two to the fifth equals, and that should give you 128. But I want you to be checking on your calculator that the answer you're getting actually works when you plug it back into the original equation. Okay, number 11, the term that is to the power is already isolated. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of that exponent. So we can either write that as taking the fourth root of both sides, or we could write it as putting our exponent to the power of one fourth, whichever you prefer. That's gonna give me x plus three equals 24 to the one fourth or the fourth root of 24. 
Now, I don't think that's going to simplify, but I'm going to check just to be sure. 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 2 times 3. Since this is a fourth root, I need four of the same number. I have one, two, three twos, and one three, so I don't have four of the same number. I don't have a fourth root that I can take out. So all I can do after I add my plus minus symbol is subtract 3 on both sides. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the fourth root of 24. I do want you to practice doing this on your calculator. Another thing that I want to point out is that if you're going to type in negative 3 to your calculator, there should be a button that looks like this, usually somewhere close to the equal sign. That's your negative button. You can't put a subtraction symbol as your negative symbol. Your calculator is going to tell you that you're getting an error. So make sure that you're using that button, and it usually has parentheses around it indicating it's a negative symbol. So on your calculator, what you could do is type that negative 3 plus 24 to the power of 1 divided by 4 plus 3. That whole term to the fourth power should give you 24. And then you would check it again with the opposite symbol here. You could also use your calculator to approximate what this value is. So negative 3 plus the fourth root of 24 and negative 3 minus the fourth root of 24 to come up with an approximation negative 3 minus the fourth root of 24 is going to be 0.787 and negative 3 plus the fourth root of 24 is going to be 5.213 so if we were going to write that answer x is approximately 0.787 and 5.213 with our set notation brackets if you haven't tried any of these on your own, I'm going to encourage you to do that now and then unpause the video and see how you did. So again, the first thing you're going to do on both of these problems is isolate your term that has the exponent. So here that means subtracting 12 to get negative 320, dividing by 5 to get negative 64. Here that means getting rid of this 1 half. How do I get rid of 1 half? I multiply everything on both sides by 2. So if I multiply 2 by this 1 half, they become 1, 24 by 2 is going to give me 48. Now I'm going to take the nth root of both sides. The cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. The cube root or the fourth root of 48, not sure exactly what that is, but I know since it's a fourth root, I need to have that plus or minus symbol. And then I need to start looking at what happens when I simplify 48. I do have a set of four twos, so this is going to become plus or minus two times the fourth root of three. So our exact answer here is going to be negative three plus or minus two times the fourth root of three. Our exact answer here is going to be negative four. Now I encourage you again on your calculator to check is five times negative four to the third power plus 12 equal to negative 308. And I actually encourage you to do two things on number 13. First, find the approximation value. Make sure you understand how do you type negative 3 minus 2 times the fourth root of 3, negative 3 plus 2 times the fourth root of 3 to find the approximation. And then use your calculator to check the final answer. So I am going to tell you what these approximations would be so you can do that practice and make sure you're correctly plugging things into your calculator. So what do we learn in this video? The first thing we talked about was what are the basic properties of exponents? How do we use them to manipulate something to make our lives a little easier so that we can simplify expressions that involve radicals, rational exponents, and the different properties that allow us to simplify. We then talked about how do we use our calculator to actually find a decimal form of these answers. And we tied those two things together to figure out how do we solve an equation using nth roots. So go ahead and write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.